All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PSR Podcast, Season 3, Episode 8. Uh, we've got a great episode for you guys today. My name is Iron. I'll be the ho- one of your hosts for today's uh, episode, along with my fellow hosts, Jordan, Etiquette, Hello, and Tucker. Hi, everyone. And we have our special guest this week will be Head Bob, who recently uh, got a pretty solid new record time in Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. So welcome, Head Bob. Hello, thank you for having me. So yeah, so we've got uh, we got Glacia, I guess here. So we want to kind of talk about the run a little bit and uh, how everything yeah. went. Yeah, um, it was basically just like um, a really sick run pretty much the whole way through. Um, it was the first. It was, I think it was the second time that I got a 121 Norman ever, um, and so, the Alpha Sapphire run is kind of like two different parts, right? So you have like a good early game, and then you have like getting a good Latias right afterwards, and you have to try and like sync them both in the same run. And this run was the first time that that happened, um, and so I got the pace and I kept it, and I just tried to keep it three four. So basically, yeah. It was like a 121.53, and basically it was just like it was a pretty good time, and then getting a good Latias and a good Kyogre to follow it up with like no major issues was like it was like the first time that happened. When you get that, you just get like really good pace, just having this because it almost never happens. <laughs> yeah, and I I see in the the notes in the document it says that you got that 121 Norman with a 21 Roxanne, which is also not a very good like immediate start. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, everything just pretty much went well. I had a, you know, good Raleigh split, Meteor Falls. I've been doing PPF skip on Alpha Sapphire, so it was like a very risky rival too that I'd been doing. Um, so, yeah, everything just kind of fell into place. Did you want to talk about um, how good your Latias section was? Because I feel like that was what kind of secured your pace because like 121 norman is like not the craziest thing it's it's been done a couple of times but the latias is like what really matters right so i mean i got a 31 IV special attack 31 IV speed with plus speed nature on my latias and um as long as you get both of those you're like generally okay but i also got a lot of the ranges most of the ranges in the like not pyre um, sleep port section are like pretty tough with Lady S because it's not very good. Um, but I got a decent amount of them, so the Rival 4 split was really good. And the plus speed doesn't matter all that much, but it helps you outspeed Matt Sharpedo in the Aqua hideout, um, which is really huge. So I outsped and just got the range, which is really fast. Um, so yeah, I mean, probably the best Lady S section I've ever really had during the grind. Um, yeah, I mean, the Kyogre section was okay, but Laddie Acid section was really what made this run shine, I think. Yeah, because, uh, actually, if we go scope back then, because I'm assuming these are your Kyogre stats set up at the moment there. Yeah, uh, yeah. So if we, I guess, go to here. Yeah, so that's here. Yeah, that's a... I really want to complain about there, yeah. <laughs> that's like a, what is it, like a low-end Latios? <laughs> at least with special attack. It's kind of like an average Latios. Average Latios. Like so really, Latios. In, really insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to get many better Latios. It's like, you could ask for like a plus special nature. Could be better, but... Yeah, this is better than like 80% of Latios that you'll see. Well, is there any difference? Oh, like, is there anything where having that plus speed nature makes it... Like... Does it allow you to outspeed some extra things compared to like a neutral 31 IV speed? Yeah, so like I said, it, so basically the only difference there is the last match fight is where plus oh, speed okay. and like at least neutral or at least like 15 IV allows you to outspeed it and kill it. But also the, the Sharpedo fight right before that on not higher, you have to have like 31 neutral works, but like there's a the speed threshold is still pretty high. 
and missing that one is really bad because then you have to do like a really slow strat where you um, bring in March Tompy, Bulldoze so it's slower, and then you swap in Latias and then kill it from there. And that's really slow, so you really don't want to have to do that. Um, those are the two big ones, really. Most of the other ones aren't like too important. And Latios doesn't have to deal with any speed thresholds, like at all, really. So it's like everything matters a lot more on this on this section for sure. Yeah, that's fair. Actually, I guess looking at general stats as well, I guess this will be pretty much Mudkip. That's a that's a pretty good Mudkip as well. I mean, like, I guess you want maybe a better nature, but not terrible nature, um, either, right? I don't know what the exact defense IV was, but I think actually 30 is enough, but with 30 minus defense is enough to get the um, the good defensive rolls and Hideki coming up. Mm. Um, if you have lower than that, defense can be kind of an issue because you can sometimes die to two low sweeps. Um, but since, I mean, you dodge the Hideki rolls, you dodge the retaliate from Norman, so in this case, minus defense doesn't really matter at all. You also, you also have 29 HP, which is like actually relevant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. For sure. Actually, looking at the Hideki fight right now, you've got Foresight, Foresight turn one, then you got to clear the second turn. Yeah. Like, yeah. Guaranteed range to begin with, with this special. But... Yeah, guaranteeing the uh, Hideki yeah. range is like really huge. It's like a major part of the, the win rate for the fight. Especially without um, any sort of super potion or fresh water to heal it off afterwards. If you just miss the range, often you just die without that. One question, one question I have, uh, Head Bob, is looking at the leaderboards, you obviously now have record in both versions, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, which is really awesome. Uh, Alpha Sapphire has quite a lot of, there's quite a lot of difference between the two games at the top, at least at the top end, in terms of the top time. So we have three times in the 253s coming into your run and now this is the first 253 in alpha sapphire so why is there such a huge difference between the two games so yeah if you like if you've been on the ORF scene a little bit in the last couple of years generally how the two games like are in terms of like competitiveness is omega ruby has always been seen as the more consistently fast game um you get fast runs more often um but for a while people were thinking that um Alpha Sapphire, like, top end is, like, way better and, like, the best runs of Alpha Sapphire are going to be better than the best runs of Meg Ruby, which could be true. Um, but it's way less consistent. You'll never get a, like, you'll have a real tough time getting a 252. Like, obviously, I could have gotten this run, um, but it's just so much more feasible on a Meg Ruby. So I can understand why people have been ha having, like, a bit more tough time trying to get like similar times in Alpha Sapphire. Also, people just don't even want to run it to begin with, which is fair. <laughs> Um, it's like it's yeah, way, it's just... way more death points in Alpha Sapphire than Omega Ruby. Is that because yeah. of the the differences in the the team or the differences in the legendaries? Both, basically. Both. Okay. Because like Alpha Sapphire, you have like Carvanas to deal with instead of like Nummel, which yeah, you always yeah, have a water, water yeah. move for. Especially uh, with Alpha Sapphire, with the PPF skip I developed, um, Museum and Slateport is really scary because oftentimes if you get hit by the first Carvana. Which is around 50 50 you lose a lot of time you heal like three or four times if you don't have a fresh water so i mean ideally you just get focus energy but then there's also like on top of that there is mount chimney the grimer can be really really annoying um again like everything in the laddie section basically and then you know still a glacier that can kill you so it's just like there's there's so many points where you can either lose a bazillion years or just don't worry, die. As, as someone that's like also played Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire recently, like both games I just kind of started, um, I can tell you that Omega Ruby is just like way better to grind, like way a way better time investment because like Alpha Sapphire you just like lose way more runs, your runs won't be as good. Um, but yeah, but if there's anything that I've seen from Head Bob's run here, is that even though Alpha Sapphire may have the higher ceiling, I just think like it's not feasible to it's just not going for a better time on here. Like this is like the only 252 pace run that we've seen in Alpha Sapphire, but like there's been plenty of um, in Omega Ruby. Like several people have been on 252 pace. In Omega like Ruby. I'm not really 
I don't really have an even though I lost like 30 plus seconds in E4, I just don't really have an incentive to run this game anymore. Because it's not like, like hoping for a time that's better than the Omega Ruby record right now is just kind of unreasonable, I think. Like again, it's possible, but it's just but the luck you gotta grind for is it. just, it's just not. <laughs> So yeah, I've just been spending all my time on Omega Ruby as of lately, even though the time's a bit better. I just um, generally have a better time playing that game. Makes sense. Uh, one question I have just in general for people, I guess, Etiquette and Tru and uh, Tucker and Red Bob, you probably would have the answer more. Um, is anyone else held both games in terms of record at the same time? Uh... It hasn't since been done so? since IMAX. Oh, oh IMAX, okay. yeah, for sure. Yeah, but they're yeah. not on the board, yeah. Yeah, not on the board. You're, look, you're looking at IMAX's earlier. He, I didn't know he had like a, what, like a 256 in Alpha Sapphire in like 2015 or something. Like, yeah. Like, that's just like insane. It was a 256, <laughs> and uh, if you if you check the Latios, it's basically a Latios. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he got the modest and just ran with it. Um. But yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's been done since since IMAX. Um, and then if you're talking about like ones on the board, uh, it would have been Sinstar probably. I think yeah, I think he had both at one time. I think. Yeah, I'm trying to follow the new the new way SRC does these record progressions. It's <laughs> but awkward. obviously I don't make a Ruby record, but I think he also had. I'm, I'm remembering like a, a 310 flat in Alpha Sapphire. Yeah, that was record at some point. I think. Yeah, that is, that rings a bell. Five Papa almost had it, but I think since Star beat one of his times. 2021. Yeah, I remember that one. I remember Five Papa. Did we have Five Papa on the podcast for that one, actually? Or? When he had one of the records. We might, we, I think we did have him once, yeah. Yeah. We've actually been doing it for long at this point. <laughs> I hope Five Up is doing well. I think I've seen him streaming just other games. Yeah, but, yeah. A, lot of the, a lot of the top Omega Ruby runners just like don't play Pokemon anymore. <laughs> But like they, oh. they left their mark, that's yeah. For sure. It's almost like running this game might be a bit of a stressful, or a bit cause a bit of stress in terms of running Pokemon <laughs> in general, given the market <laughs> resets. There's just the done, the done after it. I don't know. This is some of the least stress I've had playing Pokemon. <laughs> it's a fair play, fair decent game. Like it didn't take me a while to get good times, but I, I can see the. The distress that it can cause for sure mm -hmm. there was a good week there where like i was like why am i doing this <laughs> it's absolutely yeah. terrible to not be on runs <laughs> like it's a latios slash latios but yeah um i you had bob you did have a lot of motivation to play alpha sapphire compared to like any other 3ds game because you had all other records all like you had four out of five records before Right. Doing Alpha Sapphire. And you're also like three seconds off record. If that's correct. Yeah. The way I lost Alpha Sapphire record previously was like really painful. So there was like extra motivation there. I lost like 20 seconds on champ to lose record. Um, so, I mean, I, I knew there was, I mean, obviously running Alpha Sapphire is like not a very fun experience, but like compared to everything else that I could be running instead, it, it just felt like pretty easy decision to go for the sweep. Yeah, not a bad decision at all. I feel That's like, good. um, Sorry. yeah, like it, if there's like just one game that you have left to do, then it's just like, you kind of have to do it and you have the potential. And also like if all your friends are playing Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire too, then it's like, you kind of want to hop on. Yeah, that was like a pretty main incentive also. Just everyone just started playing it. So it was like, if there's ever a time, then, you know, right now. Yeah, because it was, uh, you, you and Tucker truly as well, I know, but were there, 
Also, Me, Tucker, Truly, Ekman, and Zipotic, yeah. Alright. Yeah. When you can have like a group of people running the same game, that definitely makes it a lot more fun, even through like the resets and the bad RNG. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's way more fun to grind as a, as a group. It, it was also like at the tail end of like our Let's Go. Uh, expedition <laughs> like we all kind of like got good times slash got pounced at a tournament at the same time so we we're all like looking for something new to do and, uh, are you the one that go to make a movie first i think you were the first one to go i was and the then... first one yeah i was like since i already got a good time at x i was like i can definitely just bang out a good time before s like give a good amount of time to it yeah and then Makes everybody sense. hopped on. I, I literally like was there when truly like stopped playing Let's Go on stream. I was like, like he was just like, okay, I, I think I should play Oris. And I was like, I, I didn't even convince him to do it, but you know, he he, he went there on his own. And uh, I was like, yeah, I, I like this game, so I'm gonna play it. <laughs> it was it was funny how it started. I was like, I didn't even I didn't even push the snowball to get it to get it rolling. That wasn't me. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's Oras for you. I think is it like... play Oras. Play Oras. Don't want to do it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could just sweat in there. Be like the two buttons that either play DK six four rando, play uh, do let's go practice, and then just in the far distance in the corner with a bunch of dust on it, play Oras. <laughs> I, it's a game I would well, like to go back to at some point, but I had such a bad time with it last time I played it. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. I don't think I could play it on stream for an extended period of time. It's just like the early game resets kind of get pretty mindless without some sort of other thing. When are the preset starter their uh, cat extension run? When are they going to get created? Hmm. <laughs> Whenever someone does a run. Yeah. <laughs> RNG manipulation at home. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, for, like, I mean, you could just argue that's practice, but I feel like, if, like that could be at least a way just every now and then just to feel like you're actually doing a run, but without the stress. Of having to like set aside a bunch of time. This could be for any game because I know, like, speaking from experience, it's solid shield 80%. And like, I'm resetting what I think I'm like around the 15% reset. Like, I need to uh, solve at like 15%. Like, that's pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's brutal. 15% to be runnable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, or it's like 40% for runnable mud kits. 15. If, if you can endure 15, you can endure 40. <laughs> That's the thing, I've not done any percent in a while. <laughs> but maybe there is some sort of argument to have that. I was like, maybe start doing something like that. Well, just me mumbling to myself than anything, I guess. But Fair enough. Yeah, I guess. Uh, remember this run. Um... Was there any like particular things that you were like really good that like, just went really well that you could like obviously like it's a very good run but even within that what was like the peak peak? Yeah, um, like I said, uh, Mount Pyre probably it's like specifically out of the Ladia, like the whole Ladia section was good. But I'd say I think Mount Pyre went pretty much. I don't know if it went perfectly. I feel like it went well. Um. And then... Did you <laughs> do Repel Skip after Raleigh? Is that a thing that happened? Uh, it seems like pretty normal Rival 2 split for you. Yeah, I want to say no. Yeah, 5238 was like around the standard I was getting for my runs. Um, yeah, like I, I think that was a pretty standard early game for my grind. Um, and then, yeah, just 
ran into a good Latias section, so I think it just has to be the whole Latias section that was the peak. Or here. Great, because like we're all like, we're always expecting Latias to like be the, yeah. the downfall of the run. It's always yeah, it's always just like okay, I need I can get a buffer for for Latias when you like finish Norman. Like if you're ahead, it's like okay, I have a buffer in case Latias goes poorly. Yeah, and then sometimes it just doesn't. It's say like the actually like the, it's actually like super rare for it to actually go well. Yeah, like, like like really rare. Now, now that I think about it, like having this good speed, like definitely makes it like more realizable to get like just a good Latias section because like you're just like blowing past the Sharpedos and yeah, Rival Four as well. You don't have to set up as much in that fight can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really helps for getting through the section. I think all of a sudden there with this like god special. And I guess like so yeah, you had like really good light ass section, you get into like Kyoga. You have a twenty years of code scenes, I guess. Uh like once you actually get well yeah, because that, that's right after you catch Kyoga, right? Where you just got just like I think you kind of are right, Tucker. I feel like I hit myself like twice in this fight. Maybe that's wrong. Yeah, I, I remember because like we we were literally thinking this was like two fifty two. If like you get a good Kyogre section, like I don't remember your Kyogre section being like very good. It was just like very mid, if not like mediocre. Because you did kind of like lose a minute. I heal an extra time when I didn't need to on um. Champ and it lost me like 20 seconds on top of the blue orb. Yeah, I guess like at this point, are you are you thinking that you're probably going to get the world record at this point, or are you thinking there's still too much to to come up that could cause problems? Um, or even just a PB, I guess, if you weren't. I still think you will record. I mean, I think like at this point we were thinking like because I was there, um, like the the world record is like pretty much secure if we just go safely. There's a huge okay. buffer on this. Yeah. Um, and he, we were like, Hepa was literally considering like, should I do blue or Glacia? Because like Glacia can end the run with a straight sheer cold. Um, during the setup, which is like three turns. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that's what was going through his head. Yeah. yeah I'm I just kind of focusing at this point on, on just, like, getting the execution out of the way and then make, like, pace decisions after that. I mean, that sounds like a much more pleasant, like, pros or, like, uh, pleasant, like, end compared to, like, if you're, like, very tight on the time and you're thinking, I'll do any to you like extremely yep. risky strat, like just taking these off that. I get in in a way that might help you even get a better time in some cases because sometimes the pressure can be a bit too much, maybe. Right. Yeah, I mean, if, if the run were any closer, there certainly are like riskier strats that you can do with Kyogre because you have Orgic Pulse and like you're not usually going to do it unless you need like the time save. Of a couple turns, but this run did not need that. Completely fine to just play a normal character section. Yeah, so I guess this this completed the sweep for you, but then like, oh no, okay, yeah. at the moment you're you're away on holiday, but like once you get back, uh, what's your what are you thinking of doing or going to? Oh, did you actually start doing something before you headed it off? I can't remember. Yeah, I've been doing Omega Ruby for like... When did I get this? Pretty much since I got Alpha Sapphire record. This, yeah, um, this was like your first day of attempts in Alpha Sapphire. Like, literally. Yeah. Like, you got a... Like, 255 as a DOS before this run. Yeah, same day. Like, pretty much right before. <laughs> Only day of attempts where you did do it on the first day. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I haven't had much luck with Omega Ruby. Uh, definitely much less than Alpha Sapphire. Um, I've had a couple potential paces. I, th I don't think any good paces have made it past Norman. Um, I'm not sure, like, I'm, I'm running lower on Steam, but I think I'll probably keep going for at least another week or two before I go somewhere else. Are you I'd doing say. the alt mains? Yeah, I've been doing a couple of alt mains to maintain motivation for the game as a whole. Well, what alt mains have you done so far? All done this period? Uh, I finished a run of Swamp or alt main, that's an event of words. Um, and I attempted a uh, electrode yesterday, and almost finished, but um, so I did. I, I didn't have an extra ten for champ, and I just couldn't find a way to win. So, but not a lot of time eventually too. Billy, Billy, All right, for right. Billy. Yeah, I think when I come home, I'm gonna go back to any percent attempts for them. I'm motivated. Would you say like your Omega Ruby record is like kind of you have a different feel compared to your other records? Like that was your first one, so kind of want to like have a newer. Yeah. Like, despite that. the fact, despite the fact that it was my first one, and I probably played the worst out of the four records that I five records I have. Um. I, I think it's a pretty good record. I got really lucky overall. And so it's it's proven a little bit difficult to try and beat because it's like a really crazy time, obviously. So you got to get a, the pace to back it up. It can be a bit tricky sometimes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like if there's a 253 in both games and Omega Ruby's just like supposed to be the better game, like at least a minute, then you kind of want the 252. That's right. Yeah. Gotta gotta make it clear that Omega Ruby's better, always. <laughs> <laughs> Expert's opinion. Yeah. I think and that kind of rounds it up, right? Or is there anything else specific that you're wanting to mention with this headball? Or anything extra that we haven't covered. No, I think I think I'm good. Perfect. Nice, nice uh, compact one, I would say. Got got the points of uh, points across quickly. So, in the meantime, um, I forgot to set the highlight video. So I'm gonna quickly try and get something quickly here. We'll go with the round four upper race because I did not have the time to make a highlights video once again. Um, but uh, for any highlight videos in the future, anyone, or if you want to send any clips over, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, you can leave those in the. I remember the text channel. There's a text channel where, in the PSR TV Discord, where you can just any, any clips. From any Pokemon speedruns that you think are, we'll say interesting, uh, or completely just the weirdest stuff that's happened in a run, in your opinion, then feel free to drop them there. Yeah. Meantime, we'll go to a quick break. Uh, head Bob, I don't know if you're planning to stick around or if you're going to be heading off, given that you are on holiday. I'll stick around for a little bit. This is shorter than I thought. <laughs> Yeah, we got through this fairly quickly. So yeah, um, in that case, we'll just quickly head over to the highlight video and we'll be back in maybe like uh, five to ten minutes. All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, we're going to start things off uh, with the uh, the Game Boy uh, series of games. Also, you saw SRC, it's changed. <laughs> Most of you have noticed that. I'm not a huge fan, but anyway, for uh, for the Gen 1 to 3 categories uh, for records for this month, we have four, all of them glitched. Um, we've got a couple notable times here in red any percent. First of all, Jadiwi, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, um, getting a record which was 
later beaten. Um, but uh, we have a 118.86, uh, two beat, beating the previous record by two frames. Uh, just, I don't know what really goes into improving times at this point. Just better execution, better mashing, slightly better. Yeah, I don't. I'm not too sure. It's it's getting to the point where it's very very small increments that we're we're improving the record by. Um, so congrats to uh, Jadiwi for that one. Uh, and then probably a couple days later, or even less than that, we have uh, Groger beating it by four frames. Uh, we have a 118.75 or 0.75 here. So that was uh, that was a pretty exciting moment, I guess, uh, to see two back-to-back, back-to-backs here. Um, yeah, congrats to both runners on this. Um, pretty short run, so not much more to say here. Uh, the next one up we want to talk about is um, Sind getting the sub-12 in yellow, any percent, no safe corruption. Um, I had a quick chance to look over this run, got a pretty fast rival fight, um, and also got um, pretty good route one. Uh, very, no encounters at least coming up. Uh, I didn't see the rest, but um, get, got through the first couple splits pretty good, pretty quickly, and then just got the good um, the good execution, getting all the uh, manipulations down uh, in order to uh, to pull off the uh, the glitches, uh, which allow you to beat the run quickly. Uh, we did go over this um, this route in a previous podcast, I believe. But um, yeah. So, congrats to Sind on this. This is a really good time, sub twelve. Uh, super exciting. Uh, the oh. Oh, are we missing one? Oh, I we're, did we're, miss we're, one. We're that is one, yeah. me being a fool. Yeah. Let's bring that up. Good job, uh, that was already pre-highlighted. <laughs> This one's actually really, really exciting. We want to, we're hoping to get uh, get Blue here um, on the podcast. We'll hopefully get him on in a future episode. Uh, but there's been some a lot of really awesome new developments in the the Gen three glitched scene, specifically Ruby Sapphire, where um, glitches which were previously only believed to be possible on the Japanese version are now possible on English as well. And there are some small improvements to these glitches as well, which have, have, are going to provide some improvements to the Japanese times as well. But uh, we have a record here by Blue Magma uh, with a, hold on here, we got 155, uh, which beats the previous glitch time. And uh, also obviously the glitch list time as well. Uh, this this route, um, I don't know too, too much about it, but it involves um, getting a bunch of rare candies using the mail. Um, I'm not really too sure exactly the mechanics of this. Hopefully we'll get a good description uh, from Blue in the future. And here he does a manipulation for a high level Tentacool. So once again, in a glitched Pokemon speedrun, we're using Tentacool or Tentacruel as our main. Um, those of you who are familiar with the uh, the Platinum glitched speedrun, we have uh, Tentacruel used there as well. Um, I'm not too sure about the specifics about the Tentacruel itself. I believe it's modest nature. I know. I think someone else was running this. I think it was Icy that was running this as well. And his was modest, but I'm not sure exactly the stats. Regardless, you're canning it to level 100, so most of the run is pretty straightforward. It's it's a very execution-based run, because obviously there aren't a lot of ranges to, or whatnot to worry about, because you're so over-leveled. But uh, really neat run. Props to these uh, Blue Magma and his, and his community for routing this. It's, uh, it's really, really interesting to see and awesome to see um, Quite a huge new development in a fairly old game in our series. Uh, get some, uh, get a new route. So, uh, anyone else have anything to say? Sort of any questions, comments? Yeah, I got a few things. Uh, first of all, it's super cool to see this. I've always wanted to see uh, Sapphire get a glitch category in English. Um, so yeah, it's I, I always like thought that it could be possible. And now it is because uh, Blue Magma, Damon, and Icy put in work to do it um i think there's like six manips in this category which is yeah kind of a it's, lot. it's insane <laughs> so like i think this category will just be like execution mostly and then like it's done like criticals and stuff um from there because like, yeah it's not much that can go wrong outside of the first few fights like up to tentacle um yeah, yeah no, the... I, I, th I think it's pretty genius like because like the main that you have is like it hits a lot of things neutrally and it has a lot of people oh yeah so it's it's just like 
Kind of a good fit. Kind of cool ones again. <laughs> the the root's pretty cool. You actually you do the same use the same manip, and it's pretty much glitchless to start. The differences are you you manip a zigzagoon, which has pickup, and then you also do a manip for pick to pick up a rare candy somewhere in Roxanne's gym. Uh, and those are the two, I guess, two of the extra manips. There's obviously a, the Tentacruel manip, as well as obviously the starter manip, encounterless, um, and the Wingle as well. So, oh, and I guess yeah, Abra. <laughs> so, there's there's a lot of manipulations in this one. Um, so, uh, we'll really looking forward to to chatting with Blue and about this in the future. Um, but yeah, it's super cool. I've been I've been following a lot of the streams of both uh, Blue, Icy, and uh, Damon. They've all been running this. I think Damon runs on Japanese, but the other two run on English. So it's it's kind of interesting to see. There's a couple different variations of the route as well that different people are putting together. And obviously in Japanese, it's going to be a little bit different as well. But um, been really interesting following this uh, sort of from a from a viewer Twitch viewer perspective. That's just uh, one question. Is this the first world record Ruby has had on the boards? At least in a very long time, I guess, because obviously things were just run on Sapphire before. I would guess so. It might so. have just been Sapphire yeah. from the start. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it's, it'd be pretty obvious that Kyogre's dead. Um, Does the yeah, Manips I mean, not work on Sapphire? Or is the game just better for Lieutenant Cruel? I, I think it's just better for, like, the tip section? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, something. Something makes it better. I think it's the opponents. Yeah, honestly. but we just be the team magma versus team aqua. Because that's right, the only exactly. difference I think that you'd really see. Like you run from the legendary, that's pretty much yeah. So it's just really the only difference is team magma versus team aqua. Cool. I actually like when I heard about this, I just thought it was in JPN. I literally had no idea this was an English thing. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was kind of a little bit confused, I guess. But this makes. This is like really cool, actually. SRC okay. still doesn't have the category for it, I think. Which is... Yeah, it does. It does mm. not. So it's not oh, an elite world nice. up. But... <laughs> It'll be there, I'm sure. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. We're kind of expecting like more records to come soon, so we yeah. will probably have the opportunity to have a uh, Blue Mag on next month. Yeah, probably. Yeah, imagine, and if not next month for some reason, probably the month after. Like if people still keep running it. Yeah. Yeah. So move on to the DS side of things. Sure. Um, I can take this one. This is Dexy, uh, a new Purple Soul Silver glitchless Japanese world record. Um, stop me if you've heard this before, but there is once again a new route. Um, <laughs> this is a new JPN seed, so a new seed entirely that gets Pokerus. Um, the seed is like barely possible to hit on JPN only, so solely because um, the text is faster and uh, the timing is different for uh, JPN. Because you start on the... Uh, like on the first input in game rather than like booting up the game um i actually don't think that matters because like you're trying to do it fa as fast as possible anyway but uh anyways uh there's a lot of limitations to the seed even though you get pokerus because like obviously with pokerus you're reducing the amount of seed that you can use by quite a lot um one of the main limitations as i was saying is like the syndical which has worse attack and lower speed so it gets a much worse Faulkner and Whitney's fight. So um, the route actually opts shit to just use Kenya, even though you still get Pokerus, which uh, is what you do in English with Pokerus, because you can outspeed um, Miltank. But yeah, the Faulkner is much worse. Um, it's actually a modest Indiquil. That's what makes the attack worse. Like you ideally want Rash or even Mild. Um, but yeah, because of that, like the whole lead up to Raikou is like slower. But once you have Raikou, it's like really nice. It doesn't have Thunderbolt still because JPN like just can't get Thunderbolt because of the differences um, in the game corner. But this Raikou still has HP ground and 
and uh, on the seed. So it has HP ground and it has focus, which is a combination we've never seen before. And um, because of that, it has like enough special attack to do the God Blue fight, which is what you see here. Um, basically, how the fight works is like in with other Raikus, you wouldn't have enough special to just like outright KO the executor on the first turn, which means that you have to set up like five turns or more because of a uh, trick room and how blue likes to play trick room. And like, if you kill the executor, then you just like die to ride on. But um, because Raikou has enough special attack to like have a 14, 16 range on blue's executor, then you just kill it turn one. And then you use hidden power ground to kill the ride on that comes in. Um, after setting a plus one, because you can live a hit on Rhydon. So it makes the fight, like, extremely fast. Um, so yeah, uh, because of this, Dexy wanted to try that route. Um, it's really nice to see Pokerus be accessible <laughs> in this route for once. Um, but it has a lot of weird drawbacks to it, including, like, it's a it's a nighttime seed, so you have to catch a pooper <laughs> instead of catching a centric for your Water HM user, which means that you don't have a sack for Faulkner, which makes that fight riskier. And then Wooper is just like a weird little thing that you get after Faulkner because you have to buy a net ball and then catch it. Um, yeah. O obviously it's Minift, but you know, that that's your water starter. You have to each cut to Cynical. Um, now, now and with that explained, you can talk about like the actual run itself and how good it was. Um, you can go to Faulkner, I guess. You can start with Faulkner. About like 22 Beth? minutes in. Yeah, just about cool. here. Um, you can like fast forward to Pidgeotto, because I think he just got tackled. Right yeah. Okay. Pretty easy for Dexy to aim at a cluster and get tackled instead of sand attack. But yeah, like he, he just gets like two boosts here, which is like not good. Just leave with crit, I didn't know that. Um, but yeah. But th this route is like extremely consistent after getting Raikou. Like, obviously it's only like blue and red that can affect a run after that. So a lot of it comes down to like the fights that Raikou can't really just like instantly win and the cynical section. So Faulkner is one of them. Um, The next like bad fight is on Price. It's one of the fights that Raikou is not great at doing. Um, I think price is like 1 hour 30. Yeah. A little more when you see Seal Dugong. You get like fast forward a bit, yeah. It, to be fair, I just thought that was price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have not price. played this game in a while. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. Um, yeah, price is a bit weird because like usually you're supposed to get um sorry what is it no uh, i mean usually get icy wind yeah you get, usually get icy wind which is fine because raikou still at speeds all three pokes but um he gets hail here and hail activates palaswine snow cloak which means that you can miss 20 percent of the time and then palaswine also has mud bomb and it also has blizzard so those can sort of spiral out of control but uh he does miss because of snow cloak and then he gets um mud bomb but he he lands like that that's one of the only bad parts about the raikou section that he had here um yeah because of hp ground uh, jasmine is free whereas in like english it would not be free you don't have a one hit move on steelix so there's no variance there um the last real time loss is like on the red fight I mean, that just like that seems loss. standard for these rooms. Yeah, like obviously, like the red fight can go pretty poorly. Like just even even without dying, it's just like lose like a minute to like blizz freezes and not getting enough misses to stave off a heal. But um, I forget what it actually was on. Yeah, th this fight is kind of kind of cool to see. You just like kill Pikachu turn one with HP ground, then you switch out to unlock your choice specs move to. So you can change it to discharge. Um, 
I think the main time loss is like setting up on Snorlax. I think it was just slow because he might have gotten like a crunch death drop. Uh, happens all the time. We hate it. As yeah, HGSS runners, but you know, what it is. But yeah, uh, I think that's. Yeah, there, there's a death drop. Um, so he has to go another X defense and like it costs another heal. Which is like a good, like 20 seconds, which is quite a bit when the red is like streamlined this much with a the new Raikou. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it for this run. It's it's like it's really cool to see Dexy's the only one who's done this, and uh, yeah, it's like just a nice breath of fresh air. At this rate, we might see another new route next month. Who knows? Oh, <laughs> let me tell you. The Worcester is literally working on a new route. I don't know what it is. He's keeping it like a a mystery. Like for a new route for Soul Silver Glitchless English. Which I don't know what it could possibly be, but I'm sure I'm gonna be like, wow, okay. <laughs> like it, it's Worcester, he's gonna do something crazy. So yeah. Something's gonna happen. Yep, something for next month. <laughs> Yeah, Dexy was playing English before oh. he, he, like, stopped. Because, like, I don't know, he, he kind of got tired of it. He needed a break. So he went ahead and did this one, I guess. Um, but, yeah, a lot of changes happening in HGSS right now. We're here for the ride. Cool. Etiquette. Yeah. This is not um, the one I wanted once again. What is up with oh. <laughs> They just did not, they were not coming up. We'll get to that one later. First, let's go. Because everyone's not seen enough of this recently. Yeah, no kidding. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the only 3DS news we had uh, this month was the Alpha Sapphire record by Headbob. Congrats once again. Um, and moving on to the Switch, uh, we've got three runs for you today. Uh, first one here is New Amber getting a... 30004 in Let's Go Pikachu any percent NMS. Uh, so just barely missing out on sub three. Um, they did just get a sub three in Eevee. Was it last month? Maybe the month before. Um, so trying to match that in Pikachu didn't quite get there. Um, and basically uh, what you're seeing here is part of the reason why. Um, so one of the big sort of uh, Breakth breakthrough is not really the right word, but like uh, one of the things that we did as part of the tournament to sort of help us finish races more consistently was come up with a bunch of strategies that are a lot safer and honestly not that much slower uh, to get through the Elite Four. Um, it, it basically involves doing like two controllers on Agatha. There's a two controller partial two controller fight on Lance um, and then a two controller sacrifice fight on Champion. Uh, and when all is said and done, you lose like 20 seconds. Um, and obviously, you know, you can save even more time doing that if you uh, happen to like get really unlucky or get crit doing the normal one controller strategy. So uh, Amber was doing the two controller fights here uh, for Agatha and then ended up going for normal strategies on both Lance and Champion. Uh, but because the Pidgeot was in the party still, uh, it you know, continued to gain experience, continued to gain levels, and was there during the Hall of Fame. So uh, didn't quite get the sub three, but still an amazing run. This is the second place time. It is 25 seconds, I think, off the current record. Uh, so, you know, we very likely could see a new a new Pikachu record by somebody who's not named Echi uh, <laughs> pretty soon, which would be awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets Ed. Etchy's also grinding right now, so we could yeah. see another one by a person named Etchy pretty soon too. Uh, but we'll see. True. Uh, I guess for like the people who also just because with it being let's go, may as well quickly mention it. What have uh, your thoughts been on the tournament so far? I mean, obviously, Edgar, you've been you've been organizing it, so you might be give a thought compared to the competitors. Um, I, I guess from my point of view, I think the the tournament has been better received than i expected um i think people have been having a lot of fun i think the biggest 
downside to it is a lot of us, and I mean a lot of us, are burnt out of the game at this point. <laughs> yeah, um, it the, the tournament was like a good length, but it's like just a little too long. <laughs> um, but no, it's been it's been a ton of fun. It's been awesome just to see everybody you know improving. I think something that might be interesting is to put together like a total amount of time that people in the tournament have saved over their pbs from the start of the tournament um just to see like because I, I think that number is going to be massive um and even people who haven't been in the tournament um you know just seeing new people pick up the games uh get some pretty amazing times it, it's been it's been really really cool to see and it's in my opinion the best switch uh speed run so it's warms my heart <laughs> i will heavily dispute that but <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, 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 I think that like with the tournament like it brought a lot of new people and like old people back to the game um it's, it's definitely definitely having a wave well or had a wave now it's just like the people who are really good are still in tournament they're like i still have to play this game <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um i wish good luck to the people who are still looking to turn Yeah, I think it was really well set up. I think he did a really good job on it. And I, I think he got a lot of hype um, from people not necessarily that I would have expected. Um, so I, I think overall it was like a pretty good success. Um, so props to Etiquette and everyone else for just setting it up. Hold on, Etiquette. It also. definitely wasn't just me. Uh, I I made I definitely made a uh, comment in one of the races recently, um, but I I spent a ton of time, you know, before the tournament started, and like I feel like I had my hand in like everything for the first round, and then round two, I just disappeared because it was like I had stuff going on with work. I think that was when cardboard clash was, and like I just wasn't there, and everything just kept going, and it was like. The amount of stuff that everyone else was doing was just remarkable. Uh, the fact that it like, because it's one of those things like when you're doing it, you feel like, oh, if I'm not here, everything's going to fall apart. But then when you actually do leave and nothing actually happens, it's like, oh, this is actually like, you know, you can just depend on like everyone else to do it um, or to keep things going, I should say, not, not offloading everything to everyone else. But um, the, the fact that like, everything kept going and, you know, Everyone was still having fun with it. Like, it was just awesome. Yeah. And then also just bring up the SRC page. The popular games, let's go. In yes. number one. 34 active players, which means 34 That's people. That's crazy. I mean, that is crazy, to be fair. Like, Red Blue at 19 is in second. Like, 15 more runners. Like... Combine Red Blue and Hargold Soul Soul with Calgary extensions, that's still less than uh, the amount of active people on Let's Go. Yeah, and the, th the other thing is, there were only 39 people in the tournament, and I guarantee that not all of those active players are people from the tournament. So, like, that's just a number of people who either saw the tournament and were inspired, happened to be doing it at the same time, uh, whatever the case may be, like, there's just a ton of people that are, are playing it right now. Um, and it's, like, all categories, too. Like, the the uh, tournament Discord just had, like, a huge all-obtainable Pokemon race, like, a couple weeks ago. And then another one maybe a couple days ago. Um, last weekend, maybe. And, yeah, people are people are just excited about the game. I like it. Yeah, I'm sure Joker has dragged some people into Diploma as well. Um... Actually, yeah, he's, at the very least, he's dragged Poker Guy into Diploma. I know that. So. That's true. Yep. So, yeah. He's, he's dragged a lot of people in AOP as well. Yeah, that's the Joker effect. Including me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and actually, as well, I just thought, I just remembered there's someone else who has been doing Let's Go Runs that I know that they haven't submitted anything yet. So, there's even more. So, yeah. It's uh, it's left an impact at the kids. And now All we are going to embarrass Crisis, who I saw earlier in chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, 
Um, so moving on from Let's Go, uh, we have two other Switch records or Switch runs to talk about. Uh, first one here is Chrysosaurus getting the Victory Road glitchless Japanese world record. And what you're seeing here is the most embarrassing part of the run. Yep. Um, so this, this jump right here is probably the hardest jump in the category. Um, it doesn't look that difficult uh, if you haven't tried it yourself. Uh, but basically the geometry of the cliff side is a little wonky and you got to hit the right spot to land on the one spot that you can actually stand on and not slide. So uh, unfortunately, it did take Crisis a few tries here, but uh, was able to to get out the record. Um, had to do some safer bird strats uh, because of low defense on the Flamingo um, and also had tangled feet, which is an issue uh, in Victory Road specifically, just because of the lower level you're at. Um, in English, you would typically just reset out a Tangled Feet bird, um, but in Japanese, uh, the run starts from the beginning of the game as opposed to after the school section, like in English. So resetting out a Tangled Feet bird is just a little bit more of a time commitment that you may not want to do. Um, but yeah, this is uh, 308.25. Um, I don't have offhand what the old record was, but I know Crisis has been... Um, made it a mission to do runs of every category of the game. Um, so I'm sure this will not be the last we see of them. Yeah, and also, yeah. I, guess I, don't, I, don't, I never do that this jump, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I do a, a slightly slower, but much safer version. Yeah. Just specifically to talk about the bird, because Crisis is saying some of the stats in there. 0 to 1 attack as well, 0 to 3 defense, special defense, 4 to 7 HP. Just not good. Yeah. Apparently really good special um, attack, which is useless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously attack and speed are the most important for the Flamigo. Um, but one of the fights in particular, the Rika fight on the Elite Four, uh, you kind of want both of your defenses to be good as well as your HP. Uh, because you essentially want to be able to live a future site plus a you know, future site, which is special, plus a rock slide. Is it? I forget exactly. I think stone it's edge, no, stone, stone Edge. edge. Yeah. yeah, Stone Edge, uh, which is obviously physical. So um, you, you kind of need a good combination of those three stats to make that work. Um, and not every Flamigo is going to be able to do it. Uh, so there are backup strats if you uh, don't have good enough stats, but uh, it definitely is a little bit, a little bit slower. All right, um, and then the last switch run we have here is Halkyrie getting uh, second place in Treasure Hunt with a three fifty two twenty eight. Um, this run is, for anyone who doesn't know what Treasure Hunt is, it's basically any percent just without the first hour and without the last hour. Uh, so it's the essentially like the good parts of the run, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, overall, just a pretty solid run. Uh, the start was probably the um, biggest time loss. Uh, had a pretty bad Flamigo um, and a bad Orthworm split. And um, like you can see this, the... Uh, that's there the calm nature nine attack iv and then 14 to 15 speed the speed's okay but the attack definitely leaves a little to be desired um and your nature does matter um at least for the first few fights that you do so um definitely definitely unfortunate to see that um but aside from the beginning of the run basically was able to keep pace um through the rest of it uh and then put up a solid time so this is um, I think I don't remember what the, the the record time is, but I know it's a low 350. I think so. Um, definitely pretty close to that. Uh, I think he was doing this mostly in preparation for pace, if I'm not mistaken, um, where he did an any percent run there. So I'm not sure if he's going to continue grinding this or I know he's been doing a lot of Arceus catch them all. So probably going back to that. That, that rounds out switch. So, go quite quickly through the uh, the side games. Starting off with Mystery Dungeon Explorer Sky. This is Pi 3366's 
Explores the sky, 80% no one in the mail, Japanese Wii U world record. A 439.51. Uh, beat the previous world record by just under a minute. Um, can't really say anything about this for an be honest. Uh, there is no split as you can see that I can try and look through to see where airtime was gained or not. So we will move on quickly to the uh, the same game. Uh, but this is Uranus with uh, beat Darkrai, no wonder male Japanese on Wii U. A world record of 7 hours, 39 minutes and 14 seconds. Uh, gained a massive lead uh, compared to the PB from like, the beginning. And whilst there was a, a bit of time still lost, uh, they were still under uh, like 12 and a half minutes ahead of PB. So, well done there. And still with PMD, but on to Rescue Team DX. Uh, this is a secure account, uh, doing 8% no password, no gummies, the second place time a 2.42.01. Uh, apparently the best early game in fug uh, uh, Fugitive sec uh, exit, uh, going into single nuts and a pretty good final dungeon, uh, or final dungeons, but there was some like dumb time losses and power and execution here and there, and I think some uh, days like just have to like skip some days just to get I don't know if it's like the right missions or just get the right circumstances to be able to finish the run we'll say uh, and then last but not least for the side games uh, a game we don't have quite often uh, this is Rangers uh, Shadows of Almia the best Pokemon Ranger game uh, this is 100% uh, Japanese DS slash 3DS world record from uh, Hakumai and this was finishing just over 12 hours, uh, 12 hours and 43 seconds. Uh, they took no breaks during this uh, this run at all, but they apparently got sleepy <laughs> by a, a certain point, and they ended up making mistakes because of that. Um, and that was kind of like the only thing that was really mentioned specifically that I could find. Um, but yeah, this is a great game. If you have not played this, play this. Uh, and then there's a few realm hacks. So Ian, pass it back to you. Hmm, yeah. So this is uh, this is a really cool game. Um, this is a game made on Essentials called uh, Pokemon Infinite Fusion. So it's not a ROM hack. It's it was it's a game that's built using the Essentials package. Uh, so it's like a sort of a standalone um, like game or program you run on Windows. But this is uh, effectively a game where you can fuse Pokemon together and kind of it kind of combines their typings and their move sets and you can make get some really interesting combinations. Um so we have um I don't remember how to pronounce uh his name, but Alimra or Alimra. Um it's done quite a bit of work. There's a couple other people that have been working on this as well. Um this is um a route that actually it's kind of funny he uses a combination of nitto king and blastoise which is kind of funny considering this is a kanto game and those are kind of the two og uh pokemon that were used in in gen one so uh kind of interesting to see uh, i don't know too much about the actual route itself it just um there's a couple of interesting tricks that are done uh there's a built-in speed up function so even though it looks like he's cheating and using speed up in an emulator um, this is actually part of the game, so it is allowed. It makes moving around quite difficult. I have done similar games with the speed up. It's it's quite tricky. Um, but I've never actually touched this game. It looks really interesting. It's a nice short game. It's an hour 20. Um, really, really, really fast game. Um, so I may take a look at running this at some point. But it's a, it's a pretty cool run. Uh, he did a rando on GDQ. Um, like, a sh like a hotfix show. Uh, a couple weeks ago where it was completely randomized um so there were some really interesting combinations of pokemon you you see so it's, it's kind of, it was kind of cool to see that um the game itself is really cool it's kind of like a fan entirely fan-made game all of the all the variants all the fusions if you will um do so you see here like a, i think this is Raticate and tentacool or something combination so um these are all hand drawn by the various people in the community so it really is a uh, a truly fan-made game a lot of uh, work has been put into it by a lot of people, so uh, pretty cool run. Um, hopefully, we'll uh, we'll be able to learn more. We'll be able to learn a bit more about it. Maybe if we see this again on the on the podcast. We can get into some more of the details uh, on this. So, uh, 
yeah, congrats uh, to Alimra for the for this one. Really cool. Uh, this next uh, this next run is is a run that I did actually. This is a um, we've talked about this game before. It's it's Fire Leaf Green Plus. Effectively, it's Fire Leaf Green with a bunch of quality of life improvements. You get instant text, instant HP bars. You get a fast bike, running shoes from the beginning, and you can actually switch between uh, Fire Fire Red and Leaf Green by saving and quitting. And there's an oh, there's a menu uh, key item or sort of a not key, it's not key items I don't know why I said key items but it's sort of a menu you can access um, once you soft reset when you click new game and you can switch between the the different versions and then you can also um, change the exp to double uh, there's difficulty modes as well uh, we've done a lot of I've done a lot of work in like e4 round two and any percent and doing a bunch of alt mains uh, but I I won't. I've, for a long time, I've been trying to maybe consider. I thought about considering to try to root a uh, catch them all version of this, where you would catch all the Pokemon. This is not quite that. It's it's the diploma, which means here I'm catching uh, the first 150 Pokemon in the deck. So you can catch 270 or something. No, two 200 something um, Pokemon in the. Uh, in the game itself, but this one just gets the first 150. So it's a very, very RNG heavy game, but you can get indeed get all 150. Uh, and so there's obviously quite an annoying Safari Zone grind, which is pretty much the make or break uh, in the run. There's all, you also have to catch the legendary birds, uh, which can be quite trolly because you don't have things like fastballs or anything like that. This run did add, this ROM did add, add timer balls. Uh, there's an NPC that sells them. Um, which means the catch rate increases the longer you go into battle. So that helps a little bit, but it's still... I had a run yesterday which just died to Zapdos. I just... it just wouldn't get in and I lost 10 minutes, so... Uh, it's quite bad, but the Safari Zone is pretty brutal as well. Uh, you have to catch three of the rare spawns here, so Chansey, Tauros, Kangaskhan, and they're all pretty unlikely to get in. Uh, there's some really neat tech that's been created by... Um, not a speedrunner, but maybe a, a shiny hunter or maybe a, just an enthusiast of, of Pokemon where they determine that if you throw bait, you can actually improve the odds of a Pokemon um, being caught. So what bait does is it effectively decreases the catch rate, but it increases the likelihood of it sticking around. And the rock does the opposite. It increases the catch rate, but incre also increases the chance that it runs away. And so you actually, with those mons, you actually throw bait and balls sort of, not alternatively, but sort of like a three, uh, one bait, three ball kind of situation and alternate between that. And you can actually get those catches quite consistently. Um, this run was just really lucky. It caught most of these Safari mons really quickly. The legendary birds were super quick. Um, and then there's just a massive EXP share grind at the end to get things like Dragonite and Rhydon and the fossils, which require a ton of levels. But luckily, because you get double experience in the uh, with that with that experience uh, setting you can put in the game, um, the grind isn't quite as bad. So the catch the catch the actual catch them all in Fire Leaf Green is about 17 hours long, and that's 170 mons. And so this is about six hours and 50 minutes for 150. So it's not a not it's not a short run by any stretch, but it's not super obnoxiously long that you'd have to take well you can take breaks if you want obviously i didn't in this run because it's it's just just short enough that i can manage it but um definitely a fun routing experiment and exercise i had a lot of fun putting this route together and i've actually made a few small improvements since um but it's not one it's not a thing i'm going to be grinding and running regularly it's like maybe like a once a week once every other week sort of thing uh it's just way too long uh, to uh, to do regularly. So yeah, that's it. On that. That sounds good. And yeah, that's the the last noted run for this month as well. So move on to the marathons. Who does anyone want to take the marathons? Or do you want to take them this time? How do you want to do it? Um, I can take them. All right, sounds good. All right, so we have a number of marathons with Pokemon-related runs in them. Uh, first up is RTA in Japan Summer 2023, uh, which I think is currently happening. Um, uh, no, five days. Four days. Oh, okay. I, I saw I saw the channel up this morning, but it may have been something else. Um, 
But yeah, anyways, um, first up is um, Caro against... I that. don't know how to pronounce. Uh, I apologize. I'm not going to attempt it either. Um, but a, a race... That's the name there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how is that a username? Um, it's the standard Japanese username sometimes, from, from what I've heard. Oh, yeah. There's really rules against a username like that. <laughs> that's... Man. Um, but yeah, so it is a Legends Arceus any percent race uh, that's going to be on the 10th of August at about uh, 5.20 p.m. Uh, UK time. Um, next up, we've got a ton of runs at BSG Annual 2023. Uh, we have Etienne doing Diamond and Pearl any percent uh, Manipolis. This is on August 13th at a little bit past noon. Uh, Jim B against SL Weed against in a snap any percent race. This will be on August 14th at just about 9 p.m. Uh, Jim B also doing a Legends Arceus run on the 15th at about 12.30. Uh, Cruel doing Poke Park Wii any percent on August 16th, a little bit before 7 in the morning. Ekman Larson doing Omega Ruby any percent um, later on that night at... Actually, a little bit before midnight, so almost on the 17th. Um, then we have two runs from Araya on the 17th as well. Uh, Araya doing the red alt main Clefable. Uh, that's going to be at about 5 p.m. Um, and then shortly after that, doing the any percent no item underflow run um, as a bonus run, it looks like, at a bit past 7. Uh, and then finally, we have a race between Crafted and Jimmy. Uh, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Any Percent Glitchless Manipulous Race, and that is on the 18th of August, uh, just before 7 p.m. All right. Um, next up, we have Flame Fatales 2023 uh, with three runs here. Uh, first up, we have Epic Yoshi Master doing PMD Explorers of Sky, Any Percent Wonder Mail Cut Seamless. Uh, this will be on August 14th at about uh, 2 in the morning, UK time. Uh, next up on the 16th of August at 2 a.m., uh, we have Dijon Ketchup doing Blue Reverse Badge Order. And then finally on August 19th at about 6.30 p.m., uh, Trevaria will be doing Scarlet Violet Starfall Street. All right. And then the last marathon we have here, uh, it's actually broken up into two different weekends. Um, this is Speed Doxathon 2023. Uh, in the first weekend, we have uh, Gunlap against CC Neverender doing a snap 100% rates. That's going to be on August 27th at about 11.30 p.m. Um, we have on the second, we've got two runs. Um, we have actually myself doing Scarlet Violet Victory Road. It's going to be on September 2nd at about 12.30 uh, in the morning. And then Fearful SR doing Crystal Starter Percent, uh, Crystal Clear Starter Percent. And that's going to be, I think, the run right after that, about 3.15 in the morning. And that's what we got for the next month for marathons. Thank you for that. And sorry for not realizing it was Crystal Clear. I'm putting just Crystal in the dock. <laughs> was easy to trip up. But yeah, uh, I guess a couple of things to... Oh, the, the only thing really to mention, I guess, before we go into the leaderboard roundup. Um... Let's Go Tournament is still ongoing. The next race will actually be tomorrow on the Games Done Quick channel. Etiquette. Yes. You're in that race. I am. D3. I'm uh, going to get against... my butt kicked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm it, rude it, 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 it should be a really good race. Um, both of the races. We, we are officially in the lower bracket finals uh so basically uh etchy has already secured his space his spot in the finals um by winning last week or uh last round i should say and uh these next two races basically the winners of these two races will face off against etchy in the finals um so it is you either have to win or you go home um so both these races will be really good uh, we wanted to get both of them on the GDQ channel, but there were just some scheduling conflicts that made that not possible. Um, so yeah, first first race of the round will be tomorrow, um, right around this time, actually. 
a little bit before uh, between myself, T-Pat, and Amber. Um, and then Headstrong, Dynam, and Triv uh, will be doing a race on Tuesday. Are you have you got webcams for the GGU one? Oh, is it no webcam? Um, I did not set up a webcam because I just assumed we were doing the same thing as yeah. I mean, uh, the Let's Go tournament. No, I just saw that this in the chat just say Giants V on GTQ. <laughs> so. No, Hopes not and this dreams time. have been dashed right there. It is what it is though, and uh, yeah, I don't think there was anything else things so we'll go into the leaderboard roundup um yeah just feel free to point any runes out as and when you notice them for example uh amnan in seventh for any percent glitchless classic a 158 21 well done there seems like Ananan's always on a run of classic i don't know that's just me every time yeah. boy always on a run Ananan is a very good runner. It does not surprise me. Um, I know we mentioned uh, like Sind earlier. Are they a new yeah. person or? Sind is like yeah, I think fairly new. Um, fairly new, yeah. Very yeah. good at Pokemon Yellow, and also doing Pokemon Red right now. Like on a good time in Glitchless 155 flat. Um. That Gen really, really 1 German difference, I guess. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> uh, German right now. Uh, a and gold or silver? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, sorry, I interrupted you, I think, there. <laughs> yeah, also a good time in any percent in yellow. But yeah. It's been on the grind. Indeed, indeed. Um, but yeah, a gold or silver manipulus run, uh, San SR with a 352.01. Rarely see, uh, well, don't see it that often, so fair play. Uh, same with Crystal, actually. It's probably, is it probably rare on Crystal, I feel like. Oh, maybe not manipulus, I don't know. It is relatively. Actually, was that like six months ago at this point? And I got moved over? It's, it's definitely been a bit. Yeah. Well, either way, uh, like Guzzi, I'm gonna guess, in eighth with a three twenty eight twenty five, and then Pranky in ninth with a three twenty nine fifteen. Uh, Ekman in sixth for by Red Leaf Green on Emulator a two o four fourteen, and then Wave in fourth on Elite Four round two with a three thirty o five. Almost there with a sub three thirty. Uh, Yaksu with the emulator 80% world record of 58.42. That's a very good time. That's quite comparable to 80%, right? On console. Any percent's record is like 50, high 56, so yeah, it's pretty decent. I didn't realize. I assume it's Skoa, but maybe it's not Skoa. Got it that way? Yeah, it's Skoa. Yeah, that plays Skoa then. Uh, Platinum, Rubentus in fourth on 80%, a 242.27. Well done there. No, so psyched about this run. I think he like oh. made a mistake involving Psycho and PP. I don't know if that was this run. I think that's the joke. Anyway. Uh, fair, fair. Good joke if you're in the know. <laughs> uh, black, white, any percent. Take first and SR again. Uh, been busy this month on uh, Desmu May. A 318.34. And Paris in 13th, but just 8% on DS slash EDS. A 31606. Truly in 3rd for 8% on Omega Ruby. A 25331. Took it. Yeah. That's your room. In 4th. Yep, that's me. I have a 25407. Um. I did want to talk about Truly's run first. <laughs> go ahead. Truly, Truly uh, like recently started playing ORS again and not many attempts and he got a 253. Um, but this run in particular, 
uh, was like 252 pace, like very solidly until. Oh, wow. Um, I think like TNL and, and then they're like. No, 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 not TNL. Uh, Rival 4. Rival what? 4, yeah. Uh oh. Rival 4 fight like went poorly because he missed a lot on Swallow. Oh, yes. That's what it yes. was. Yep. And then from there, like a couple of mistakes because like he was playing at like 5 a.m. I was. That's what I was going to do. Yeah. It, and literally no one was there because it was the middle yeah. of the night. <laughs> He was like trying to adjust his sleep schedule and like made a couple of mistakes, but like, yeah, it's no, it's whatever. It, it wasn't like 252 pace after Rival 4, but like it could have been like maybe like 20 seconds better if it wasn't at ass o'clock, but yeah, <laughs> I'll say a couple of ORS top runs there. Yeah, it's like Poltuk sneaking in ninth as well with a 2.59.06. Um, Check more from him. This is taking up the entire... Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just the splits. <laughs> oh, the splits just, coming. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's a emulator English world record for Daniel. A 5.47.08. Uh, oh, uh, quite early in the month. Uh, let's go. Oh People boy. be playing it. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Aspect in fifth, uh, 3.0142. Kick and run in sixth with a 3.0149. Head Bob. You have 3.14. Yeah, that's me. That is you. Trey in 12th with a 3.0412. Julian in 15th with a 3.0535. Sandy in 16th with a 3.0645. Ian, that's you. Uh, in 18 for the 30819. Yeah, that was um I PB'd like twice in the tournament. Uh hmm. this one was not in the tournament, I don't think. I actually have a time that's better than this. That's 30744, it which was during my last race, which I got eliminated. But I wasn't local recording, so I can't submit that. So uh, I'm gonna be um uh, trying to beat that time or at least get into the three oh sevens. I don't remember exactly how this specific run went. It was like a month ago, so. Wait, but the Only tournament the recorded it, didn't it? So, mm -hmm. did you uh, did you submit like the tournament vote? No, because there's no audio. Oh, um, yeah, the, the, yeah, you're totally right. And like, I was never leading the race, so the audio was never on me. Because <laughs> it's usually put the audio on the leader. Unfortunate. Yeah. Eh, it's fine. If the run was not that good, I uh, I lost a lot of time at the end. So, definitely beatable. Instructions from tech to local record always. So I am disappointed. I, I never are. I never received the, those instructions. But I should have remembered to record it. So, I'm not going to blame tech. Yeah. That is fair. But anyway, uh, for Eevee, Headstrong in... That's not even Headstrong's PB now. But it's uh, 3.02.36 there. Yeah. Yeah, she I got believe. a 3.01 something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Three one, three one, three one. Yeah. Good. Tucker, that is you. Three four ten. Me. Yes, I had like a three ten, and then like I got on a really good run for my steps. Got a three four, and I was like, yeah, I'm done for now. Next year. Fully <laughs> fair. Head Bob. That is you there with truly an eighth in diploma, a four fifty-six fifty-eight. Yeah, this is like kind of a ludicrous run. Because like neither of us have any of idea what we're doing. We just got really lucky with our S1. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Fair. Um there's me in third for Tower of Two Fists, uh Gershfu, A one twenty four seventeen. Uh D rusted it for hot picks. I shouldn't say de rusted because technically I didn't know the route before I started. Yeah, because you had never done the I the not done XP the... candy route. I did not know, so yeah, that was nice. Got a PB. Tried doing some attempts since I've only had well, only once have I got past Crown Syndra, and I died trying to do Dynamaxless because I missed the wheezing and got clear smog. I almost killed the the thing though, the slow bro. Yeah, because you can skip D Max on yeah. Clara. You can't do that in Shield. Super jealous. 
Is that not something you can do? I guess no. You not. you need it for you yeah. need it for Swoobat. Because Swoobat has unaware. You sword runners are lucky. Thanks, Avery. Play the better game, I guess. I don't know. Um, couple of BGSP runs. Um, third place for any percent glitchless on Brilliant Diamond, with English with no turbo music on. Um, it's like. Over two hours slower, but still, it is third, so uh, 541 11 from Moxie. Their first ever Pokemon speedrun, fair play. That doesn't feel right, we need more runs on those boards. That's a good category. I, I, we <laughs> need to combine the categories more. <laughs> well, you can't compare music off to music on, to be fair. No, yeah, that you can't do, but from my understanding, there's not really any time difference between Turbo and No Turbo. Is... Mm. Turbo's like slower in this, that game because yeah. of the way the mashing works. It sucks. Press so, and hold. Press and hold. Yeah, yep. Combine. <laughs> and there's not much difference. <laughs> so much. Uh, is there much difference between the game versions themselves at this point as well? It's just like I don't it's... think so. Yeah, I would if like if I were Very there normal. for the start, like the conception of the boards, I would not have split the games like. That's just how I feel about a lot of these games. Well, because we didn't know what the second round was about. We thought it was like actually like pretty good. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. if that was yeah. actually yeah. big, then yeah, that would have been would have been fully fair. And uh, to be fair, it's not difficult to combine them. It's it's better to start them off split. Next time a new game, or at drops, least have the variable for them. I'm gonna get the lesser played game and then be like, yo, I got a new round. We should like split the game, and then <laughs> it'll be like that forever. Look, as, as long as no one lets May turn the music off. As you know, let May turn the music off. It's better. M music off better. No. No. It's better. I will never play music off. Well, I, I won't Wonderful play music again, again, probably, but if there were, music on only. Music off is so much better. You don't need. G game audio is overrated. When doing speech. So oh, true. My goodness. No. Oh my god. No. Just. Mm. Just listen to your own music. <laughs> you just listen to your own music. You have a much better time. You don't hear the same do do do's all over. But like, just the music tool was pretty good though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The music tool is pretty cool. Fair play to Fury for making that. Um, Bojo in seventh for Legends Arceus on ninety percent Japanese a four nineteen twenty four. Uh, very few small veterans. And most of them aren't even on there because Croesus has yet to submit them. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, sixth for any percent Japanese glitch list for Mayo Gonzi, a 5.36.40. Um, Gavin in doing seventh. All, doing all three of the uh, single stories? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Starfall Street being. The pick of them, I would say, in seventh with a one thirty-two forty-four. I think uh, that was a, the duck route because he was messaging me about it, but I, but I don't see his comment there, so maybe I'm wrong. It's very blurry. Um, there's no mess. There's no like. Nothing there to suggest. Anything. Yeah. Yeah, there's apparently also sensitive hours. Flashing image was warning, so we'll not go on that, just in case. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, oh, stadium? Yeah, he's confirming it was Duck. Okay. Ah, okay, cool. Thank you for Duck the confirming gang. that. Um, stadium. Uh, switch B, uh, switch BC. Uh, fifth for Files of Slave, a one thirty-seven seventeen, and then an eighth uh, on the emulator, Josarian, is a one thirty-four fifty-eight. Uh, PBR, uh, Pokemon Battle Revolution, 80% round 1, 9th place for K, with a 346 14. 346? Uh, did I say 336? 346 14, just in case. Um, some snap runs there, 80% uh, for Sailor Sarkis, 27th, 8152. And then second on Switch, uh, Akafuku with a 21.47. Uh, 
some pinball runes from West Q. And then also second for Nagai Megum on Catch Jirachi, miscellaneous character there. Uh, four minutes flat. Meba sweating right now, six seconds behind. Uh, Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team, or Red Blue Rescue Team. Uh, seventh for Ruvis on 80% no quick save, no one mail Japanese Wii U, a 21802. The ROM hacks and fan games. Iron? Is there any that are noteworthy to def definitely mention? Yeah, we talked about infinite fusion there's a beat gold category which is pretty much as you'd expect um well actually maybe not as you as you'd expect but i think that's kind of like beating red in in um hard gold soul silver kind of like the post game sort mm -hmm. of thing um a couple crystal clear runs as well pretty solid mm -hmm. Tora getting the record in renegade platinum i know head bobs run this i have not but it's a pretty cool run yeah, I, I conceptualized this chat out route, but like when I ran it, I had no idea what I was doing, so the run was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. Uh, actually, fair, fair. Yeah, we, can we talk about one of the. Oh, sorry, go on. No, no, you were talking. You're still talking about Kyotora, so go, go ahead. No, yeah, I was just going to give a dumb fact that they have one of the oldest accounts that have submitted Pokemon speedruns. Just. I've been looking into stuff. He knows he. It was not anything relevant. That's all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, a couple runs for me on Fire Deep Moon Plus. We talked about one of them. There's only four round two run as well, but that's not terribly exciting. So we can move on. Yeah, on to the category extensions. Um, Alright, he's done some stuff. Akisons has also done some stuff. Uh, or mains, uh, actually, right, also did 80% no item on the flow. Old record there with 1849. Oh, the. Sorry, just the, the no Gable run. Forgot about this. Like, there's a bounty tied to this, so that's the kind ah, of time right. to beat for Alt main. Bounty. Uh, 149.05. That's, that, that's to the end of the year, right? Getting a bit closer, if it is. Um, I think so. I, I want to say that, yeah. Fair, fair. Let's see. And Jimmy with the Battle Factory Silver Singles World Record, 37.20. On Emerald as well, that. I was. I don't, I just assumed that was Hard Gold Soul Silver. That was on Emerald. Emerald. All there. Yeah, I guess he's moved to other battle facilities. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Diamond Pearl, Calgary Extensions, Manipulous Glitchless on Emulator World Record, 40, uh, 4 hours 11 minutes 59 seconds. All done there from Matt. Um, all the French runners for Heart Gold Soul Silver, love to see it. Uh, couple 345s. Yeah. Silver, Charlie's Traveling. Good times. Awo. 214 minute plus any percent. I think he did that at ESA on the road. So oh, yeah. Congrats to him. Um, Twisty just in the middle of that with uh, all main posts for Alligator in English. 357 35. Yeah, I believe this for Alligator is like shiny. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what's with Twisty and doing shiny alt mains, but you know, he's the only one to do a manipped English. Total plus run, so bad boy. Yeah, there it is. I think a lot oh. of French runners did a uh, manipless total for fun. So ah. yeah, manips win um, again. That's not the first centric run, is it? For all no, runs. for some reason there's been like centric runs. Like I don't know why people are doing them, but like yeah, they're they're doing them. Eh, it's centric. Centric's cool. I, I like centric. Yeah, but never do that to myself. But yes, yeah. Ayush. 713. Uh, shiny Leaf Crown. It's also Like, it's just weird. Yeah, Shiny Leaf Crown, if you don't know what that is, um, like, every... there, There's, like, a weird thing that you can do when you talk to your Pokemon, and, like, there's a chance that it gives you a leaf. 
um, and like base it changes like where you can get them based on your nature, and like there's like five different um, leaves that you have to get, and they're like dispersed. Like you have to go to Kanto to get them, to, to get like at least one or two of them, and um, yeah, I mean it's, it's kind of fun to do. Bad play, but like a lot of it's just like spamming talking to your Pokemon <laughs> the overworld until you get all five leaves. That's what that is. So Bahamut three fifteen eighty nine. Some uh, black white mini plus uh, an emulator Lucas with a three twenty four thirty one uh, Paris with the alt main pokes. Um, does someone read that name? Sorry, where? Uh, just what Pokemon is that? Oh, the the alt main. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my eyes don't work right now. Yeah, no to. worries then. Three nineteen oh one. Blue Karate uh, Guy. <laughs> Lil Karate Guy. There we go. That's the Pokemon. Lil Karate Guy. Um, Black White 2. Uh, Manipulus. Lucas there as well with a 325.44. Um, Ultimate Pokes Amphros on Japanese. Uh, Ashitsutsun. A 428.18. Yeah, there's like, I keep I keep seeing runs of this in the queue by Ashy, like keeps doing this. But uh, times are getting lower. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, cool. It's weird because like Ampharos and uh, this is Black White Two, right? The game. Yeah. yeah okay. And Ampharos and Black White Two is pretty bad. You have to like grind on Adinos before Berg, and then you have to <laughs> use Zubat to Horrible. kill Levani. It's it's not good, and then clay is like not good either. But yeah, hey Bob, that's your all main spawn pit run. A three hundred seven fifty seven. Wait, am I seeing that right? Is it emulator? Wait, hold on. <laughs> it might it might have just been oh no. So it'll have so like for the holiday ball round that works. There's technically three sets for when it comes to emulators. You see, the emulators are allowed. Emulator the band and emulator hidden. It'll, it's just Omega Ruby. It'll have been said that emulators are allowed. It's oh, not so saying like, it's an emulator run. It's like if you combine them. If you them, consider emulator runs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I see. Yeah. Why is that the only one that has? Uh, probably because <laughs> I forgot to remove. Probably forgot to remove it. That's all. <laughs> so it's down to me. It's my fault. But. uh... <laughs> If I remember to do that, I'll sort it out. It's not a big deal. Uh, kicking run with the All Main Pokes Pikachu, a 314.48. Uh, BSP Basm Pass uh, Silver with a 411 flat. I mean, it's done a fair few runs of that, I believe. Legends Arceus Blood Dirk doing Boss Rush, uh, 1450. And then Catch Spirit Tomb, a 327.27. That's a world record. Well done there. Uh, and then onto the no more scrolling down now, actually. So uh Yikrin with mini game champion on stadium two on hard nine tokens, a six sixteen point five six seven. Um and then yeah, just to round it out, Pokemon Coliseum, Calgary Extensions. Dasphoreau with Alt Main Croconaw Espeon. So Croc Root, I guess that's uh, 346.25. That's the leaderboard roundup. Ezekiel Iron. Okay, sorry. I don't know if. I, I assume you could not hear the sneezing because my mic probably went bigger, but that definitely distracted me. I'm just. That was from like <laughs> no, downstairs. My door's that. closed. They just. You did not catch it. Don't worry, but they just they, they sneeze so loud. But anyway, uh, yeah, Edica, Tucker, Iron, thank you for joining us on or for hosting the podcast this time around. Like, I felt I always forget the S. There we go. Follow us, please. Uh, and Head Bob, thank you for taking time out of your holiday. 
for... Wouldn't uh, have it any other way. Pod quest. Mm, much appreciated. Another sub to podcast, let's go. I know. <laughs> there we go, I can type the commands correctly sometimes. Um, the next podcast should in theory be on the 2nd of September. I don't think there's anything happening. But you never no, know. No, the marathon, the PSR marathon will be the weekend before, so we should yeah. be fine. Oh, We're yes. fine, the in marathon. theory. Yes. Uh, the schedule releases like two days from now? Monday? Yes, that should be yeah, on Monday. Um, yeah, believe... the committee's meeting tomorrow to, yeah. to kind of figure out the schedule, so... So yeah, um, they will okay. decide what runs. I don't know what's going to happen with it. I don't know what people have been thinking. I've tried not looking at it. So yeah. Well, yeah, there's It'd a good be... there's a good list this year, so it's going to be yeah. uh, going to be a good batch of runs for sure. And yeah, as with that, uh, I hope you all because I don't think there is anything else. I hope you all have a good rest of your day or evening wherever you are. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.